Hi, this is PC Roger. What I'm here to talk about today is saving money by extending the life of an old computer. Now here's the Dell Dimension 8200 that's been around for a little while, but it's a Pentium 4, 2.4 gigahertz. It's got an 80 gig hard drive, and it really is, per is capable of some pretty decent performance, but it's throttled by one problem. It doesn't have a lot of RAM. Back when this machine was manufactured, 256 megabytes of RAM was considered a lot, and RAM was expensive, especially the RAM bus type of memory that this machine uses. So what we're going to do today is install some memory that I picked up off of eBay that's going to triple the amount of memory this machine has. We're going to add 512 to this machine. Now, there's a couple points uh, I want to make first. And anytime I really do anything with a machine that's a much more nature than even turning it off, and, and even then, I want to back up the information that's on the machine. Make sure it's backed up before touching it, before opening it, before doing anything. If your data is important, back it up. Don't make any assumptions about it being there when you turn the machine back on, if it turns on at all. Now with RAM bus memory or RIM memory, there uh, or really any memory at all, there are different specifications and you want to make sure that everything goes with the machine. Now in the case of this memory, there weren't too many manufacturers and Samsung made a lot of it. And it says right on it what the speed and what the uh, performance level of it is. And I'll try to get that in here and see if we can, can uh, get it to show on the camera. But you can see it says 800-40. And that's actually the performance specifications of this memory. And if you go on eBay, you will see some, some various uh, memory specs on there. It might be 800-45, might be you know 1024 by something. It's, it's really the best and sometimes actually mandatory to match things up absolutely. So you will want to make sure that you take a look at the memory that's in the machine and try to match it exactly if you're trying to add to the memory. And even if you are replacing the memory that's in there, taking out completely, you still want to make sure that you're matching memory to the machine. And as you can see, this is kind of the clamshell uh, style case that Dell has. And here's our memory. And there are actually four slots there, four sticks. And currently, the two on the left are the memory, and the two on the right are just some uh, some kind of plugs that have to be there that provide continuity for the, the system channels. And everything has to go in in pairs. So those two on the left only work because there are two there. You couldn't get by with just one. And some of the newer memory today and newer computers, you still want to put memory in in pairs for maximum performance, even though it may not be required. And here you can see I've taken out one of the, the pieces of memory and one of the continuity boards from each of the banks and again, carefully from the, in front of the camera, if that focuses, you can see that this also is the 800-40 that was in there. And that's what I'm trying to match. And this is what that uh, continuity circuit board looks like. There are no memory chips on it, but it does uh, have to be in the machine if the memory banks are not filled. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the memory that's in here since it's of a lower uh, quantity, uh, 256 versus 512, and actually move it to the second bank. Not really necessary. Uh, if the, there were some machines years back where if you had faster or slower uh, speed memory, you would have to put it in uh, differently in order to not have the machine uh, actually try to, uh, to perform at a higher level than the memory is capable. This is just kind of what I like to do. Seems to work uh, very well. Not going to say it's a requirement, but but that's what I'll be doing. I'll be putting the 512 in the, in the primary bank and the 256 in the second bank. Now here you can see the old memory in that bank on the right, those two sticks, and the bank on the left, primary bank, is empty. Now you notice it looks pretty clean and it really is not going to be too dirty in this case because uh, both of those uh, banks were, were populated with something, even if not memory. So there wasn't any dirt able to get in there. But you're going to want to make sure your computer is clean and get any of the dirt out of there. I've got a separate video on, on cleaning, but you're going to want to use a, a type of computer canned air. You know, it's moisture free. Carefully uh, blow out any uh, dust or, or, you know, lint that's in there so that you do get a, a good connection with the memory. And as you can see, the, uh, the memory is keyed. So it really only goes in one direction. 
and make sure that those notches are in the right place and you just nicely snap it in. There you can see those, those end caps uh, there that actually lock it in, the memory on the side, and those are uh, straight up and down uh, when it's done. You can, you can tell that it's uh, snapped in. And really that's all there is to it. This machine is, now has three times the memory that it had before, and it will perform pretty well for, who knows, maybe another year, another two years, and uh, we'll save the money of upgrading the machine because this one's perfectly good. That's it for this video. I hope it's helped you in some way. Please stop over at my website, pcroger.com. I've got a lot more information on computers and software, uh, Windows tips and tricks. Got an e-letter that you can sign up for that's free. Thanks for watching this video.